one uh, sort of question that came to mind, and this is mentioned by my former uh, speakers also, is the heterogeneity of the experience. And I was wondering how that's handled in the econometrics and whether it produces any biases in the results or not. And I'll tell you why uh, that's important when I try and share some of my thoughts later on. Um, but in terms of the policy recommendations that come out of it, I'm sure it would make the World Bank and the IMF very, very happy because this is the standard package that they give us uh, in Pakistan uh, repeatedly. Um, so I'm basically going to structure my comments uh, along um, the following lines. Um, first, um, uh, is any type of growth sufficient for poverty reduction? And this ties into the aggregate growth, uh, you know, and the predictions of growth that you have. Um, uh, is any type of growth uh, sufficient for speedy uh, poverty reduction and reduction of hunger? Or are there some growth paths that are more poverty reducing than others? So I'm going the next step from where you are. And, um, um, uh, and are some strategies more inclusive? Uh, hence, are they more efficient? So this is a debate that's been going on for many years, and I thought we could learn a lot from the heterogeneity of the Latin American experience uh, in terms of some of those things. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn from the cumulative experience for people from my part of the world uh, because there is such a diversity in terms of the economic structure, in terms of the opportunity and potential. Uh, Latin American countries are mostly further along in their structural transformation and their resource endowments, etc. So I'm going to present some comparative statistics to set the learning in perspective, and I thought that might help the debate later on. And then I'll put some issues on the table that come from... Um, where I come from, uh, that have affected growth and its translation into poverty reduction. So this is basically the growth experience. Latin America and Caribbean up there, South Asia, where I come from down here, there is this nice uh, curvature towards the end, but you notice that the Latin American Caribbean re region um, ha has um, increased the uh, slope of that curve is much better um, since the about mid. Um, if you look at the income and its structure, um, the Latin American Caribbean region is about four times uh, in terms of per capita PPP. Um, the average annual rate of growth is slightly lower, but the interesting thing is that the share of agriculture in GDP ranges between 4% and 9% for the seven countries in Klaus's example. Um, and uh, for, the, for the South Asian, it ranges between 11 and 35, so there is this big um, uh, sort of uh, structural difference and its implications for poverty reduction and especially the type of uh, predictions that uh, and the type of prescriptions that IFPRI offers. Um, uh, if you look at the export of goods and services, again, the LAC region is way ahead. If you look at the percentage share in exports from goods and services uh, of output, also uh, significantly higher. Um, and uh, higher technology exports also as a percentage of exports, much higher than in the South Asian region. Two things that are very important where I come from, aid and military expenditure. Um, if you look at the net aid received per capita, the LAC region is way up there in terms of, uh, I think this is dollars per capita. Um, if you look at the South Asian region, uh, it's much significantly lower. Um, if you look at the military expenditure as a percentage of GDP for the South Asian region, it's twice what it is in the LAC. In my country, for example, just debt servicing and military expenditure makes up 80% of the budget. Um, if you look at the population, you look at land and fresh water, um, you are blessed in this region. Um, a smaller population, um, lower population growth rate, a much larger surface area, and um, fantastic resources of fresh water per capita. And water is an essential uh, ingredient for nutritional status and for health and for everything else uh, that we stand for. Um, if you look at the social indicators also, life expectancy at birth, youth literacy, and especially compare the gender, uh, it's almost gender, um, there is no, uh, no disparity between male and female um, uh, literacy at, for the youth in the Latin American region. Look at the South Asian region, there's a huge uh, disparity there. Um, a look at uh, access to improved sanitation. Again, very important for nutritional status and health, etc. Much, much lower in South Asia. Um, and also in terms of access to improved water, this region is way ahead. 
Um, if you look at under five mortality and you look at child malnutrition, you notice the stark differences between these two regions. And that, I think, um, uh, provides a perspective uh, in terms of what we have to learn from the Latin American region and what we have learned and what we can transfer. Um, in terms of the decline in the population living on less than a dollar 25 per day in PPP terms, um, you will notice that uh, in terms of the uh, South Asia, that's the blue upper line, there has been a decline, but there's a much higher level from which it is declining. But look at the Latin American uh, region, and, and you will notice that although levels are low, the declines are not as significant, which means that you're now at that level where it's much harder to address, um, and, and it is much more stubborn to, uh, to, um, uh, to benefiting from the growth, et cetera, that you are um, all uh, enjoying. So that sort of puts a perspective. Um, if you look at the, uh, the predictions on progress towards the MDGs, and you look at the Latin American region and the South uh, Asian region, very interesting. There's a large number of green areas. Green are where you will meet the MDG requirements in terms of uh, the different uh, goals of the. But you notice that there are red areas also and in the LAC, uh, focus just on the LAC, and that then ties back to the heterogeneity of experience in terms of these different countries, and I keep coming back to this theme. Uh, in terms of the South Asian one, um, there are some greens, but uh, the orange and the red ones uh, seem to predominate if you look at the two uh, together. So within that context, I'm going to <clears throat> focus uh, on a few issues that have seriously uh, affected agricultural growth in my part of the world and that will continue uh, to have uh, an effect. And I think that in a later session, Ashok and uh, Schengen will be talking about these. But the first is the population and uh, its growth and its structure. And there has been talk of this yesterday also in, uh, and in earlier sessions. Uh, urbanization, the, the development of new supply channels, um, the convergence in living standards, um, uh, food taste, the growth in agricultural trade, Biotechnology in crops is a huge, huge factor that's coming up to affect growth. Livestock production also, food safety issues. Environmental factors, which in my part of the world are grossly neglected. Um, the impact of climate change is already obvious in several aspects of our agriculture and other aspects of life. Water availability is being affected, land quality and availability. The issue of biofuels, this trade-off between food feed and fuel, Land acquisition by developed countries, which is a new phenomenon in my part of the world, but it's something that has implications for poverty and food security. And uh, last but not least, governance issues. And before I leave, I want to focus attention on um, the, the inadequacy of effective policy making. Policy making has been complacent in that part of the world, and that's reflected in the very low and declining share of investment, public sector investment especially, for <clears throat> uh, the infrastructure and other supporting networks that are necessary to create the conditions for growth, et cetera. So there's a need for more policy analysis and improvement in the underlying quality of data, um, and especially in terms of the rural sector, uh, the changing rural dynamics, these linkages between um, farm and non-farm sector and, and what brings about effective growth and reach, uh, and also uh, research on social safety nets so that those who are marginalized can actually be in uh, uh, there is uh, also a need to strengthen monitoring and evaluation. There's very little information available on what works, what can be replicated, what can be upscaled and how. Um, and uh, there is a need overall for better knowledge management uh, dissemination, uh, which is required for effective capacity building and ownership.